So within three, 99.7. That begs the question, how much is within everything if you go on to infinity, to in late infinity, to infinity? Yeah, but how, what percentage of the people would be covered in that? That would be everybody. And what we're going to do in the future is relate 100% to the number one. And we'll talk about proportions to be able to, to use the information very accurately. Okay, I did over here what I wanted to do there, which is to show you that if we go out one standard deviation, we're, we're, 90, we're 68 percent. If we go out two, we're 95 percent. If we go out three, we're 99.7. So we don't need to fill this one out again. We just we just did that. Would you nod your head if you're okay on that example? Feel pretty good about that. I'm gonna have you do one on your own just to make sure that you can get it. Mean is 34 pounds. 34 pounds. Remember, LBS at the very end stands for pounds. Mean is 34 pounds. Standard deviation is 8 pounds. Find out what percentage of the people, or what percentage of uh, my data, not people, because I, I don't think anybody's going to be 34 pounds. I don't think so. Uh, no. No, not in here at least. Maybe babies. Tom, you're 34 pounds? Congratulations, man. What's your diet? Rice cakes. They weigh less than air, so right? You should drink helium. That's my breakfast today. What percentage of data will fall between 10 pounds and 58 pounds? Figure that out. Do it on your own. If you know it, don't say it out loud. Just figure it out on your own. I want you to understand that we don't have to always go this way. We don't have to figure out the standard deviations. We can take, or to figure out the limit of our data, we can take the limit of our data, use that in conjunction with our standard deviation and mean to figure out um, what percentage of our data falls in that range. So figure that out. Think about it for a few seconds. I want you to struggle with it in your head first. Okay? I want you to kind of grasp it. I don't want to just tell it to you. So think about how you might do that. There's going to be several ideas. There's several ways to actually go about doing it. I'll give you what I think is the best one, but there's several ways to do it. Has anybody, by show of hands, has anybody got this yet? How, know what percentage is within there? Okay, if you're still struggling, let me give you some, some hints here. Let me give you some hints. Firstly, do you know your standard deviation? Can you find out how many standard deviations fit between this number and that number? Don't say it out loud. Try that. Try that. That's one, that's one option. See how many standard deviations fit in there. What I mean by that is, you start with 10, right? That's your lower limit here. You start with 10. Start adding 8 to it. See how many 8s go into that. That's one way to do it. It's kind of a trying to nail a hammer together, trying to nail a house together with a rock. It's a little bit too complicated, but I mean, it, you can do it. Not complicated, a little too hard. Did you get a number by doing that? 
You probably got, anybody else get six? Okay, what that tells you is from here to here, you're six standard deviations away, right? Six standard deviations away. Isn't this one, two, three, four? Isn't that six standard deviations away from each other? Now, of course, this has to be centered on the mean, so we're, if you do it that way, you're missing a vital piece of information. You're, you haven't used the mean at all. What if, what if this six, or uh, you said six, right? What if that difference of six standard deviations was not even close to the mean? Well, then this really wouldn't work. But if it's centered around the mean, then that will work just fine, okay? So we have to check that. Now, here's how you do it. You want to calculate how far away from the mean this one is and how far away from the mean this one is. So how you do that, subtract them. Why don't you do this for me right now? Um, what's your mean? Take your 58 minus 34. Okay, take your 58 minus 34. Here's your 34. Here's your 58. What's the distance between those two numbers? 24. Okay. Now, I want you to take your 34 minus your 10. Because 34 is here, 10 is obviously to the left. I want you to find the distance there. What's the difference between 34 and 10? So would you say that these are equidistant from the mean? So this is centered around the mean, right? And this is a normal, and we're assuming this is a normal distribution. So this falls into this empirical rule category. It's centered around the mean, it's normally distributed, therefore we can use empirical rule. Now instead of adding eight, six times, there's just maybe a different way to do that. Think about this. If this distance is 24 and your standard deviation is 8, can you figure out how many times the standard deviation goes into 24 without doing it the hard way of, let's see, 8 plus 8 plus 8 is 20. Can you do it a different way? Yeah. Say that? Divide it. We can divide it, right? Could you divide it? So we find the distance between your mean and the number that I want to calculate here, the number I want to find the percentage that falls between these. Take that distance. Maybe divide this by your standard deviation, and that will tell you the number of standard deviations that it is away from the mean. Now, here's the cool thing about this. Do you necessarily have to get a whole number all the time? Here we will, because we're using the empirical rule. But in the future, what if I made that 59? You're going to get 25, right? Please say yes. yes. Yeah. If I divide that by 8, am I going to get a whole number? No, I'm not. But it would still give me, this is interesting, it will still give me the number of standard deviations away from the mean. It just won't be 1, 2, or 3, it will be like 3.2, 3.1, something like that. We're also going to be able to use that information. You don't have to be a certain number of standard deviations away from the mean. That would be impossible because that would say, oh, everybody in the world is only 62 or 68 inches or 59 or 71 inches or 56 or 74 inches. Are you one of those six measurements? Are you? Maybe some of you are. I'm, I'm 72, so I don't really, I don't fall in one of these four. So I am not exactly two standard deviations away. Are you getting the picture here? Not every piece of data is either one or two or three. You could be, I am two point, like 2.3 away from the mean. I'm not exactly that, that measurement. You with me on that? So you don't necessarily have to get a precise whole number uh, number of standard deviations away from the mean. Here we will because we're using the empirical rule, but in the future we're not going to. The idea is, is this though. You find the distance between your numbers, between uh, your data value and your mean. You find the distance there. You divide it. You divide it by the standard deviation. Notice that's x minus x bar. I'm using symbols now. Do you see that that is x minus x bar? x minus x bar gave you 24. Nod your head if you're okay with that. Okay, I'm kind of pre previewing the next section for you. You're going to see this uh, on Friday. I'm previewing it. It's kind of nice. This gives you the distance from a data value to the mean, agreed or not. If we divide by the standard deviation itself, which would be our s, x minus x bar divided by s. That will give you the number of standard deviations away from the mean a data value is. 
in our case, 24 divided by 8 gives us 3. We do the same thing over here. We do the same thing over here. Um, we're not going to quite worry about the sign right now because I know if I take x minus x bar, I'll get a negative. Now that's going to help us out in the next section. For right now, I just want you to get the concept down. The distance is still 24. We're still dividing by 8. We're also getting three standard deviations. Now with this information, with knowing that it's normally distributed, with knowing it's centered around the mean, and knowing that you are three standard deviations to the left, and three standard deviations to the right of the mean, can you tell me what percentage of data falls between 10 and 58 pounds, please? Man, that was a huge buildup, and it's like two people, come on. You should know, How, what percentage falls within that range? Yeah, that's right, that's three standard deviations to the left and to the right. So whatever population or sample I'm working with, in this case it's a sample, whatever sample I'm working with, we had an average of 34 pounds, standard deviation was 8 pounds. So what I can tell you is that if I go from 10 pounds to 58 pounds, that's going to cover almost darn near everything in there, 99.7% of our, our data values. Raise your hand if you understood what we talked about so far. Good. Now the last thing is a very quick thing. Um, unfortunately, standard deviations themselves can't be compared. I'll give you an example about this. Here's our heights and here's our weights. So I say that um, for height, we had a mean and a standard deviation in each case. Our height had a mean of 65 inches. Our standard deviation was 3 inches. For our weight, let's say we were calculating the heights of people and the weights of those same people. Let's say the average was 175 pounds and the standard deviation was, oh, let's say, 15 pounds. And let, let me be more drastic than that. The standard deviation was um, 7 pounds. So you get the idea more, okay? Here's the point. Which one has a numerically bigger standard deviation? Say the letter? Wait. The weight does. Sure, that's seven. The other one is three. So numerically, that has a bigger standard deviation. Do you agree? Mm -hmm. Okay. Which has more variation? Even though this standard deviation is bigger, can you say this has more variation? Yes. What do you think? Question again. So this has a numerically bigger standard deviation, right? This one's three, this one's four. Just by looking at the numbers, 